Okay, folks, um, thank you for being here this morning. My name is Cole Jordan. Um, I am the grants manager at the state budget office um, and I've got my team here with me. Um, Christy Doy, Valari Hunter, Jessica Robinson and Adam Rosipal. Um, Want to thank you all for being here. Uh, we're going to go over the pre award process um, for OSBM office of state budget management grant awards uh, from this recent appropriations act um, and budget. So we will go through a presentation and then uh, start with the Q and a at the end. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. Um, so. OSBM, if you're not familiar, the state budget office is the primary fiscal advisor to the governor of North Carolina. Um, we, our office prepares and recommends the governor's budget, and then um, our office administers the budget passed by the General Assembly. Our team is responsible for administering the grants um, that OSBM is responsible for awarding. Um, so. Either your state grant is in the state appropriations act in the bill text or in the committee report. The majority of the grants that our office is administering will be in the bill, um, but that's where you can find like the actual language uh, referencing the state grant that your organization is receiving. So uh, the way this process works is at this point, um, Everyone that is being administered a grant through OSBM should have received a notification by Monday um, for what grant they're receiving and how to submit documents. I will say that we've got around 50 grantees out of the 1,000 that we'll be administering that we are still trying to identify contact information for. Um, so I'll uh, show you put the email address up on the screen here later, but if you received a grant um, and you've not heard from us, uh, either we have the wrong point of contact for your grant or we need an email address and information for uh, the best point of contact. So if you have not received anything, feel free to email us at ncgrants at osbm.nc.gov. Um, so when you receive the notification email, it's going to include your grant ID, um, the amount of your grant, uh, the fiscal year in which it's um, awarded for, as well as a list of the re statutorily required documents that you have to submit. And then importantly, a custom upload link. So out of the five documents, which we'll dive into a little bit um, more specifically later, <clears throat> Uh, but out of those five documents, there is some um, um, information that we don't want to get out. So what's helpful is using this custom upload link. It provides a level of security rather than just emailing us the information. So please be sure to use the custom upload link. Um, it'll look something similar to this link right here. Um, and it's listed in the email notification underneath the documents that are required. Um, by submitting it there, it helps us to be able to review and approve of your documents, um, but also to ensure that should any of our emails be um, compromised, that your uh, banking information is not um, found by anyone that shouldn't have it. So uh, the second part of this uh, is this sub to submit the required documentation. So you've received the notification that you're receiving this grant. Um, you've got the custom upload link and a list of the documents that are required, and now you need to fill them out. So there are five documents um, that are required by statute to be submitted prior to receiving your grant funds. Um, this includes a W-9, an electronic payment form, along with supporting documentation. Um, so that is uh, quite often um, left out. So just remember that you're, you're submitting your supporting documentation. A copy of your conflict of interest policy. We just need to ensure that you um, have indeed uh, a conflict of interest policy internally. And then a sworn statement of no overdue tax debts. We only need one of the first four 
documents or one of each of the first four documents. Now, if you have multiple grants, then you will need to submit multiple scopes of work for each grant. Um, but if you do have multiple grants, you only need to submit the first four one time. So one document of each of the of the first four and then a scope of work for every grant that your organization is receiving. If you have received grants from our office previously, you will need to resubmit all of these documents. This is a new budget, a new fiscal year, um, and we're going to need all updated con um, information, both banking and um, internal documents. Um, so let's kind of talk about how to fill out these documents. Um, and so in your email, you're going to have um, links to each of the documents that we're requesting. Um, and it's really important that you use the version of the documents that we've provided. Um, and that is for a number of reasons, but let me um, take you to our website where all of the documents live, but in the email you received, you should have like a link. It'll look exactly like the text right here and it'll take you to a link of the document. So most importantly, the W-9 form is a substitute W-9. A lot of organizations, all organizations have a W-9 on file, um, but the state controller's office is gonna require that you fill out this particular form. If you submit a W-9 you already have on file, they're not going to accept it and it's gonna slow down the process of creating your banking account that can receive um, state funds. So when you fill this out, make sure you're filling out everything that has an asterisk um, and that includes your um, identification number that you choose. You wanna make sure that in number two that you fill out uh, the numbers right there. Uh, the legal name of your organization goes here. If you are an organization that has a legal name, but you refer to yourselves as something different, so it's something that you, you know, it's like a shortened version, um, you can put it in number five. Um, again, number three, you know, if it doesn't have an asterisk, it's not required. Um, the legal address uh, you'll want to fill out there. If you have a different re, uh, remit address, you want to make sure you fill it out here. This is going to be important when we're talking about the electronic payment form because this information has to match the electronic payment form or else you'll have to resubmit your documents. So make sure you're filling out your contact information. Um, for the entity type, if you are, if you choose other, um, you have to fill out this box. So if you're a nonprofit and you choose other, make sure to you type in nonprofit here. Um, entity classification, same same goes here. If it's other, you need to specify and include the specification in this box. Lastly, uh, make sure you um, sign and date this document. Otherwise, um, it won't be accepted either. So you'll want to save this. I highly recommend having a folder for your grant. Um, it is more often than not that there is some sort of turnover um, between the time that this grant starts and ends. Um, so just make it easy for your organization by keeping and holding everything in one secure document. Um, now let's talk about the electronic payment form. So open this up. Again, um, make sure you pay attention the, along with the document that we're about to run through, you also have to attach a supporting document. And this is to verify the account number provided on your electronic payment form. That can include a voided check, bank statement, or a letter from the bank. You just need to make sure that the account number listed on any of those supporting documents matches the electronic payment form that you've submitted. So let's talk about the electronic payment form. So you're gonna use a tax ID number or social security number, you know, as much, if you can, I would use whatever you used on the W-9, make it consistent. Same with payee name, use that legal name. Remit address, we've been getting, this has happened quite often. Um, if you have a remit address, it either needs to match the legal address that you have listed on your W-9, or 
you need to include a remit address here in number seven that matches what is on your electronic payment form. So again, the remit address has to either match your legal address on your W-9, or you need to include the remit address you put on your electronic payment form in number seven remit address on your W-9. It'll get kicked back if you don't do that. Um, contact information, uh, new financial information. So what's really important to understand is that the state controller's office is only going to allow you to have one banking account on file. Um, it's really important that you don't commingle your funds. So uh, folks are always want to have a, if you don't have a, um, a fund accounting structure um, where you can account for your funds separately through an accounting system, then you're going to need to have different um, banking accounts for each of your grants and it needs to be separate from like any other sources of funds. Um, now, with that, you can only have one account set up with the state. So you want to fill out your new financial information here. If you're a returning grant recipient for OSBM, just put in what you used previously. Um, and if you are a previous grantee or received grants from the state before and you want to change your banking information, you need to make sure that you fill out prior financial information, right? So if you are changing your banking information that is on file with the state, you need to put your prior financial information or the current thing you have on file, and then you need to fill out the new financial information up top. Um, now, so if you have multiple grants and you're like, well, if I can't have multiple accounts with the state, how do I have the funds show up into the separate account so that I'm um, uh, being responsible and following the guidelines of the fund management side of your grant? Um, the way to do that is to have one account um, to receive the grant funds. And then as soon as you receive those grant funds, you transfer them into a, that separate account. So you could put your general fund account here. And then as soon as you receive those funds, just make sure you put it into its separate account um, so that you're not commingling funds with any other sources of funds. Um, and so again, if this is if this is brand new for you, just go ahead and fill out the new financial information if you haven't had a grant with the state. Um, if you did have a grant with our office, go ahead and fill it out again. And if you're using the same banking information, you'll fill out new financial information. Um, just uh, you know, refer to it as current. Just it's not necessarily new because you already have it on file, but. Um, it would go into the this box. Um, if you are changing your banking account, you need to put the new account up here and the old account right here. Um, uh, make sure you check all these boxes, sign and date, and then attach the supporting documentation, right? So whether that be um, an electronic, uh, a bank statement, a voided check, um, you need to make sure you submit that with the um, account information um, that matches your electronic payment form. All right, so the um, kind of more straightforward documents are the conflict of interest. So we just need you to send what you have on file. It doesn't necessarily need to be signed um, by your board or um, your you know folks in the office we just need to know that it is um, a document that y'all adhere to um, and if you don't have one on file we do have a, a sample policy that you can download um, and replace with your uh, organization's information the no overdue tax form um, we provided a um, form for you to fill out as well. So all the highlighted areas are where you'd put your specific information. You need at least two authorizing officials. Um, in most cases, it's it's your board or whomever oversees the organization. Um, and then you need it has to be notarized with a signature and a seal. Um, and then you can submit that. 
And the last piece is your scope of work. This is going to be the more um, specific information to your grant. Um, so <clears throat> the scope of work is going to be filled out based on your grant description. Um, we've got a couple examples, um, but there, you know, there's kind of two categories of funding sources that we'll talk about. Um, there's the directed grant, which is coming from the general fund, or there's a state capital infrastructure fund SCIF grants. Um, they have different reversion rules, um, and in most cases, the SCIF grants are going to be solely focused on capital projects, um, whereas the directed or general fund grants are going to be kind of more um, wide ranging in the uh, purpose of the grant. So, say you have a grant description that says provides a grant to your city for capital improvements or equipment. Um, if we click on the example, you'll see at the top, you've got your organization's name. Your grant ID is going to be five digits. Uh, that should be included in the email, the email notification you received. Um, this scope of work is, is a part of the grant agreement. Um, and if you need to expand upon your project beyond the um, room that you have on this sheet, you can attach additional sheets. Just make sure that you are filling out um, the this form itself with as much as you can, um, but you can attach additional sheets if needed. The objectives, um, we've included some descriptions to try to be helpful as to what we're looking for. So objectives, how do you plan to spend the grant? Um, what projects do you want to accomplish? So a lot of people want to tell us like what their overall organization focuses on, which can be helpful for us to get some context. Um, and so if you want to give us a little example or kind of give us like a brief mission statement, um, that's completely fine. But the majority of the scope of work needs to be only focused on how the these particular grant funds will be spent. Um, so, what do you want to accomplish with the um, grant funds that you have? Um, in this case, they want to support a large portion of the design and construction of a new community center containing fitness spaces. And then um, they go through and say, like, what um, construction will be done, um, what projects within that construction is going to be focused on um, and how the funding will support those projects, whether it be in the equipment side or the design or the full scope of the construction. Um, you just want to be as detailed as possible. Um, and then if you have a lot of times um, folks are working on a project, but the project itself ex um, is more than the grant funds are allotted for that you have. So if you have a million dollar project, but you only receive $500,000 in grant funds, then um, you're only going to talk about the 500,000 that's being spent using the grant funds of that a million dollar project. Um, we understand that a lot of folks are using their um, general fund uh, to help um, supplement the grant funds for a project, but we're, we're mostly concerned with how these particular grant funds are going to be spent. <clears throat> So you can kind of um, touch on the fact that you've got uh, additional funds supporting this project, but make sure your focus um, overall is on the grant fund expenses. So expected results is going to be, you know, what do you hope that by accomplishing these objectives, what will happen, right? So complete a new community center where all ages can gather um, to improve the health and wellness. And then performance measures. So list the steps it will take to accomplish the projects supported by these grant funds. Um, if it is more of like a capital project, then you're going to um, talk about, you know, what are the steps that it's going to take to spend these funds and to complete this project. Um, this helps us to see, like, when you start su submitting quarterly reports and you tell us that, um, you're, you're in the design phase that you've still plan 
plan on using these grant funds for three, four, and five, right? Um, if your project grant funds ended after the design phase, then we would look at your scope of work and see that you don't have three, four, and five. And so that means that you're close to the end of your uh, grant fund funding. Um, yeah. So if it's programmatic um, in terms of the project that the grant funds are being uh, used for, then list the estimated me measurements for project outcomes. Um, you know, if you're helping to support one of the programs that you have at your nonprofit, um, you can talk about, you know, how it's going to increase the number of um, citizens that are being um, able to be seen through that program or assisted through that program and kind of what the grant funds are going to help you um, increase in terms of your programmatic outcomes. Subgrantees, um, if you have subgrantees, you want to list them right here. In some cases, some folks have more than three. In that case, I would um, use that uh, attachment document um, or create an additional document just to attach it so you can kind of break those down um, with more room. The budget, make sure you're including the timeline um, for which you plan to use the grant funds. Um, this is important because we want to make sure that you know what your reversion date is and that you have a clear plan as <clears throat> to how the grant funds will be spent and during what timeline. Uh, expenditure description. So break down like what areas do you plan to spend the grant funds on um, and then total balance of the project fund. So that's going to be the grant total amount. We want to make sure that um, you know exactly how much grant funds you're receiving. Um, and in my example, I mentioned earlier, if the project was for $2 million, but you only are receiving 1.5 million, um, then you only want to list 1.5 million as the total balance of the project fund. Um, and then <clears throat> provide a breakdown of the estimated expenses. So you may have told me that you're spending 30,000 on the employee expenses, but um, what does that entail? Especially if you're going to spend a lot on our employee expenses, we need to ensure we need to know, like, how many employees, what type of employees, um, and then, like, administrative expenses. What does that include? In this example, it's utilities, goods, expenses. What kind of um, equipment are you hoping to purchase? And so there's like a general breakdown right here. But if you'll see, I mentioned C attachment for full breakdown. So if you, again, can't fit everything here and you think it'll be clearer to, to provide an attachment, please do so. Or if you've already received an estimate from your contractor, go ahead and attach that. Um, that way we've, we've got quick access to see that you've got a great plan in place and we can go ahead and approve all the expenses associated um, with your project. Um, so, as you'll see, this is broken down by category into um, estimates for, you know, the actual equipment that's going to be purchased, uh, the utilities that the, the grant funds will cover, um, and so on and so forth. So, what you want to be paying attention to is your grant description. What is the purpose for which your grant funds are being um, used for or what's the intended purpose that was written in um, the budget by the legislature and then you want to um, make sure the scope of work matches that intention um, we've got some other um, examples so like a directed grant uh, it provides a directed grant to um, example nonprofit um, those are more kind of wide open um, so you can really use it for any public purpose uh, so if your um, grant description is just as it's a directed grant um, to your organization then anything that your organization would pay for with their own funds you can use these grant funds for um, right so this one goes into this is a nonprofit telling us you know what kind of counseling services they provide and then they talk about um, using the directed grant funds for operation and program costs 
Um, and then they list the expected results. Hey, this is what we think that um, will be accomplished by um, the extra support that we have for um, the programmatic and operation costs. And then they, they even provided like a breakdown of the different projects and programs that they plan to use the grant funds to support. Um, and then gave us um, examples of, or like the indicators that they plan to track as they increase um, the services they're providing. And then we get down to the expenditure description. They, um, you know, make sure that the total balance of the project fund equals the grant funds, and then they break it down by categories. And then they mention, you know, employee expenses, what that's included, what's included in the employee expenses, um, including salaries. So they break down what kind of staff will be supported. Um, and then goods and expenses, the event supplies, program supplies, um, and then other expenses. So as as detailed as you can get what is great. Um, lastly, we've got a scope of work with subrecipients. Um, I believe this example shows um, not a bunch, but if you've got multiple projects or multiple subgrantees, um, we recommend either identifying them as like project one, project two, project three, or like A, B, C. That way it's easier for when you start reporting um, to reference what the expense is related to, um, as well as for us to be able to track um, what, if the expense was allowable based off the scope of work. Um, so you can kind of talk about each project separately. Um, again, if you've got more than three or um, would like to break down the projects they're like a little bit more uh, intense or your sub grantees have multiple projects themselves you can provide an attachment and break it down um, that way so yeah um your your grant administrator is going to be uh, a very helpful resource along with these examples as to how best to submit for your project all right, let's get back to the presentation. So after you've submitted all the required documents, um, the state controller's office has set up your account, uh, your grant administrator has worked with you and approved all your documents, um, then we will send a grant agreement. Um, grant agreements are sent via DocuSign, so they're all electronic, um, sent to your email. Uh, once the required documents are submitted and approved, your grant administrator will reach out to request the following information for your grant contract signer, which can sometimes be the same person as your point of contact um, that you've listed as for your organization, or it could be someone completely different. Um, the contract includes uh, the effective term, recipient and agency duties, funds management, and reporting requirements. Some special items to remember, um, directed grants are for non-sectarian, non-religious purposes only. Uh, state funds for any one employee of a nonprofit are capped at $140,000. Um, directed grants or general fund grants uh, shall not revert until October 3rd, 2025. And then state capital infrastructure fund grants do not revert. Um, two easy ways to determine your grants funding source is to, one, refer to your notification email. Um, and if you're still unsure, then reach out to your grant administrator or um, our NC grants at osbm.nc.gov. Another helpful way is to look at the database of directed grants that our office has put together. Um, so that's also on our website. Um, we'll point you to this. Um, if you go to directed grants, it's database of directed grants. So this includes all of um, the grants included in the uh, recent budget and um, administered by different agencies. So sometimes folks will ask if why they haven't received a grant um, notification. And in some cases, you may be receiving it from a different agency. So a helpful tool is to check 
um, our online database, and then it will show you um, the administering agency as well as the agency contact um, and how much you're receiving. But in terms of knowing what source of funds you have, they are listed over here. Um, and we will update this key to make sure that it's um, referencing general fund versus uh, SCIF, but um, I'll show you a breakdown in a moment. But this will give you a general sense of um, what kind of grant you have. And then if it's being administered by another agency, um, you'll see that right there along with their agency contact info. Um, and you can put your organization into the search box and it will um, show you which ones your organization's receiving. So in this case, it's looking at every county, every, since I said Alamance, it's going to show me every grant in Alamance County. But now that I put Alamance County, it's more specific. And so it's gonna show me in the organization receiving funding kind of ones that are more specific to Alamance County. Okay. So here's a breakdown kind of of the different funds. There are quite a few um, in this round. We used to, it used to be a little bit more simple um, with only like two different types, but uh, it, it's really what you would should focus on is whether or not it's a general fund or a state capital infrastructure fund grant. So if it's a general fund, it could be from, it could reference regional economic development reserve. Those are all general fund grants. Um, if it's GF, that stands for general fund, GF recurring, shallow draft fund, water infrastructure fund, or SFR reserve. Um, now, what I will say is these only uh, this like description only applies to OSBM administered grants. So if you're getting a grant from DEQ under the water infrastructure fund, you're going to have slightly different. Um, you'll want to talk to DEQ about um, how their process works and make sure you're following their guidelines. Um, if you receive funds as a general fund directed grant, for fiscal year 23-24, those revert October 3rd, 2025. Um, if you receive funds for the next fiscal year, those funds will then revert June 30th, 2026. Uh, typically, they normally run on the fiscal year ends, which uh, the state ends June 30th every year. Um, and in this, uh, the first fiscal year funds, they took into account um, that the budget wouldn't pass until after the fiscal year had began. And so they had the reversion date set to two years after the um, budget became law. So those are the reversion dates related to all general fund directed grants. And then you've got the state capital infrastructure fund grants. The biggest difference is these do not revert. Um, your contract will have a termination date um, that we can uh, refer to later on if your project's still ongoing, um, but the funds by law do not revert. So your funding source may say SCIF. Um, this also includes any ARPA temporary savings fund grants um, or SCIF IT reserve. They fall under this non-reversion category. I'll talk about ARPA temporary savings fund just briefly. Um, there's only about 34 to 40, maybe 50 of our 1,000 grants that fall into this category. So if you are not an ARPA temporary savings fund grant, please just don't, don't even worry about this. Um, but these funds are not immediately available. Um, we, they're tied to Medicaid expansion. Um, they are state funds. Um, but we are going to have to wait for the funds to be available as the Medicaid expansion um, increases. Uh, all these funds will be available at some point. It's just a matter of timing um, because the way it's written by the General Assembly is that um, there's a tiered system. So um, the General Assembly identified 14 projects to receive the funding initially. Um, and after that, there's a breakdown um, of the disbursement 
schedule. Again, this is only for ARPA temporary savings fund. Um, there's only about 40 grants out of the 1,000 that we're administering that fall into this category. Um, but we do have an anticipated um, forecast of the disbursement in terms of when the funds will be available for us to um, send. So that can that could be as late as June or July of next year. Um, so that's just a little little tidbit. But if you have ARPA temporary savings fund grants and you have questions, talk to your grant administrator. Um, grant funds should be used for the purposes for which they were intended and can be found in your grant description. Um, capital improvement, if it refers to that in your grant description, it includes real property acquisition, new construction or rehabilitation of existing facilities and repairs and renovations. Um, this is the grants database that we just kind of went over, but it walks you through how to get there, how to search, um, uh, and then a way to kind of tell the difference between the two. Um, all right, so then you receive your, you've submitted all your documentation, it's been approved, your grant agreement has been signed. So let's talk about once you've received your funds, um, kind of some funding notes, and then um, I'll hit on a few reporting requirements, um, but you won't have to do that until after you receive your funds. So grantees can keep interest earned, but it must be used for the purpose of the grant. Um, so, you know, these grant funds were intended to be spent um, now, and so you don't want to put these grant funds in any um, you don't want to invest them anywhere that you can't immediately draw down without being penalized. So these funds are intended to be spent. You should not have them um, sitting somewhere that you can't immediately access them. Um, and uh, if you want to put them in a, a savings account, you can do so um, that way to, to receive interest. Uh, but the interest has to be spent back on the purpose of the grant. Um, the cost of allowable audits can be charged to your grant. Um, and then the, each state agency is responsible for checking your state, the state suspension of funding list. And if um, your organization's on that list, then we are unable to disperse the funds and we'll need you to um, address any outstanding requirements prior to dispersing those funds. In addition, if you are a current recipient of grants administered by the state budget office, you must your grant must be in good standing and have submitted all required reporting information prior to receiving any additional grant funds. So we are not going to be able to send you additional grant funds if your current grant um, is out of compliance on the reporting side. We'll be sending a notification um, by the end of the year or the beginning of the first of next year to anyone who falls into that category. Um, so um, what we ask is for you to hold off on reaching out about it, check your reporting sheet, um, reporting forms to make sure that everything's been submitted. Um, and then uh, we'll address those things later. Um, but you you will need to be in good standing prior to receiving any additional grant funds. Um, so then you start conducting the work, the great work that you are going to be doing with these grant funds. So just something to be aware of. Um, this is really far out. If you haven't received your grant funds, uh, I just want you to be aware, but it's not something to be concerned about right now. Um, but if you receive like all there's three levels of reporting, um, they're essentially all the same except for level three. Uh, level three, if you receive, hold or expend 500,000 or more, then you are required to submit a yellow book audit. Um, that can be a program specific audit. Um, that's only focused on the grant funds, or uh, it can be a single audit that makes sure you have the grant funds as part of the scope. Um, and you can use a single audit that your organization may already um, have conducted annually anyways. Um, so once you receive your funds, you're going to be responsible for submitting 
uh, quarterly performance reports. This is kind of like a narrative document. Um, you'll receive notifications, monthly notifications, if not more often, more frequent um, notifications about the reporting deadlines coming up, the um, reporting requirements. Um, but you also have to, along with the quarterly performance report, so the narrative that kind of where you talk about what you've accomplished. In addition to that, you also have to submit your expenses. Um, we do not ask for supporting documentation for those expenses to be submitted during your quarterly reports. Um, however, you are responsible for maintaining those documents um, for up to five years after the project is complete. Uh, we're going to have lots of webinars about the reporting process, so I want you all to be aware of what's required of you when you start reporting, um, but we will have lots of online resources as well as helpful webinars that will walk you through the process step by step. Um, the audits that I referenced, um, those are not due until nine months after your fiscal year end. So when I say that that's off in the distance, it really is. Um, if you're if you receive funds in January and it's 500,000 or more, and this is in total of state funds, right? So if you've got multiple grants with our office that equal 500,000 or you've got um, multiple state funds, your organization is receiving from different agencies that equal 500,000, you hit that audit threshold. Um, but if you're if you hit the audit threshold and um, your fiscal year ends in June, you won't be required to submit that audit until um, within nine months after. So by March, the end of March of the following year. Um, reporting deadlines. So we're not transferring any grant funds until January, which means your first reporting deadline will be April 10th. And that'll be for all expenditures or progress made between January 1st through March 31st. Um, and this is going to be required whether or not you've spent funds. Every quarter, once you receive your grant funds, you have to submit quarterly reports regardless of any expenses or progress being made. Okay, that sort of concludes everything. Um, we're going to get started at, with a Q&A in just a moment. Um, uh, Valari Hunter is going to help me read those questions. So uh, there should be a Q&A box in the right hand corner of your screen. It should have a question mark and you can click on that. Um, we are we've got quite a few people on here, so I just want to be respectful of everyone's time, especially ahead of the holidays. So um, bear with us. We are only going to answer uh, the same question one time um, just in an effort to be as efficient as possible. So uh, please be sure to pay attention to the questions that are being asked. We find that it can be very uh, beneficial to hear what your fellow uh, grant grantees um, are asking. Um, it tends to be helpful for everyone. Um, and then if by whatever reason um, you don't think we got to your question, um, you can email us at ncgrants at osbm.nc.gov and we will help you. Um, and in addition, like all the things I referenced earlier, if you need to send your point of contact um, for your grant, email ncgrants at osbm.nc.gov. If you want to know who your grant administrator is, you can email us there too. Um, so I'm going to pop over to the frequently asked questions during the Q&A and just have this kind of up in the um, enter in between things, um, as this, these questions tend to get asked quite a bit, uh, but yes, this webinar is recorded. Um, we will put it on the website along with the, uh, PowerPoint presentation. Um, I highly recommend anytime you've got a question about anything, especially when you get to the reporting side of things, use our website. We've spent a lot of time, um, trying to update everything. They'll, um, as time goes on, we'll have even more helpful short videos as to how um, to answer your questions that we get quite often, or whether it be how to uh, submit reports or um, submit your required documentation. Our website is filled with great info. When will funds be dispersed? Um, that's dependent on when your documents are um, submitted and approved. 
um, and then your grant contract has been signed. Uh, contracts have not gone out yet. Um, we are still working through some IT um, setup and um, the funds will not be dispersed until January, but we are working our hardest to make sure we review all of the supporting documents um, right now and next week. Um, our office is closed Monday through Wednesday, so we'll be back next Thursday um, as well as tomorrow, but uh, we'll be back in the office on the 28th and 29th. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just, we'll keep reviewing this, the documents and get you feedback. Um, and then once it's all approved, we'll send those contracts and we can start um, sending funds at that time. So we plan on being able to disperse funds to grantees that have submitted all required documents um, and have signed their contracts by um, the latest, the second week of January. Um, when do you, or can I use my grant funds for expenses that and projects that have already occurred? Uh, yes, so your state grant funds may reimburse for project expenses that were paid on or after the fiscal year in which your funds were appropriated. Now, anytime you're referencing previous um, expenses or like a project that's already happening, um, reference it as uh, we want to hear about the actual expenses, not the reimbursement. Um, and so if you received grant funds for this fiscal year, you can uh, use them for expenses beginning July 1st of 2023. Um, and then when do you have to spend your funds by? If they're directed or general fund grants for this fiscal year, you have to use them by October 3rd, 2025. Um, if they're for next fiscal year, they, those need to be spent by June 30th, 2026. And then for state capital infrastructure fund grants, you know, we highly recommend going ahead and getting started. Um, you know, the faster you spend these funds, the uh, less often you have to submit reports to us. Um, so um, while the SCIF grants don't revert, um, you just want to make sure that you, you know, they want these funds to be spent in the state and in the community. And so let us help you find um, projects that uh, we can help to accomplish that. Um, all right, so I think I've spoken plenty. Uh, Valari, if you will help with um, getting us started on the Q&A. Okay, and some of these questions were specific to um, a grant, but I think they will be helpful for everyone to hear. So mm -hmm. some of these questions, even though we've provided a response in the chat, I'll go ahead and read a few of those as well, okay? That would be great. Thank you. Yes. So our first question is from Patricia Cantrell, and her question is, uh, Haywood County received grants which directs us to disperse funds to five nonprofit entities. Does that require five scopes of work documents, or is that considered a singular project package with one scope of work? Um, that is a great question. So if you have multiple projects um, for your one grant, you are only going to submit one scope of work. Um, and you can list, so each grant should only have one scope of work. You can provide attachments if you need more space. Um, but otherwise, um, it should be a one scope of work for multiple projects. And I was looking for Patricia to try to unmute, make sure that answered. I don't think that she's, she's out. Yeah, she's stepped away. Okay, she stepped away. Yes. All right, so we'll move to the next question. Our um, next question uh, is uh, regarding the scope of work as well. I'm a nonprofit. Some of our grants would be subgranted out to local nonprofits doing the work for our objectives. However, I do not know who would be who would be the uh, sub grantees as it would depend on the RFPs that are approved. Can I list the sub grantee as local nonprofit if I do not know who it would be yet? 
Um, so we need to know who the sub grantees are ahead of time um, prior to dispersing funds. So we can maybe work with you. It's going to depend on your grant description um, and what how um, you all plan to do that. Um, the, who was the individual asking the question? I do apologize. That was Sherry Archibald. And, and Sherry, I did request to unmute your mic in case you have additional questions yeah, or follow up. Yeah, Sherry, what organization are you with? United Way of Wayne County. Okay. So, and then what what were y'all planning on? Um, how how is the project going to work? So there are um, multiple initiatives that we are planning to put RFPs out. So I'm just wondering, do I need to wait until after the RFPs come back and we know who's going to be the grantees before we, uh, so some of it will directly benefit programming with United Way and some of it, um, the work is gonna be done with another nonprofit here in our community. So I just don't know exactly who it is until those RFPs come in and I see, and our board determines who will receive that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I would say we we're going to need those sub grantees before. Um, I know that's, you know, you're going to want the money as soon as you can, but I assume you'll need to know who the sub grantees are before the work can really get done. Gotcha. Um, so hopefully the timing we can, you know, work with you to make sure as soon as you know, those sub grantees that we can try to expedite the process, okay. um, which brings up another point that you don't have to wait to submit the other documents prior to submitting the scope of work. You okay. can submit the documents individually ahead of time so that we can get everything else started. Okay, so I could just submit everything and then perhaps submit the scope of work with the sub grantees listed by mid to late January and then get it turned around at that point. Yes, absolutely. And the, honestly, there's no deadline on submitting these documents. Um, okay. You know, we we want to review them quickly for everyone who's ready to submit them. But um, no, we there's no deadline to submit them, um, and we want y'all to feel you know confident about your project and and the plans for them as well. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you. You're so welcome. Okay, our next question is from Amy. We use classes in, in QuickBooks instead of having separate accounts. Can we do that with these funds as well? As long as your accounting structure can account for the funds separately from all of their funding sources, you should be okay. Which it sounds like that gives you that. Um, Flexibility, but Amy, I'm going to request to unmute you. And let me know whether you have to accept the request. Sorry, I don't know if we mentioned that. Um, Amy, did that help to answer your question? Yeah, so we have classes in QuickBooks for all of our programs. Um, mm -hmm. And so I didn't know if we could set up a class specific to this money or if the state would prefer that we have a, a separate account. Um, it's really up to the like capacity that the organization has receiving these funds. And as long as you can, um, effectively account for them separately, then, then, and you have the structure for that, then that's, that's totally acceptable. Okay. And then we received SCIF funds and directed funds. And so would we need two separate classes or two separate accounts for both pots of money. Yeah, so any if you every grant has to be accounted for separately. Okay. Thank you. Now you you may be using those grants on the same project, but you still need to treat them as as totally separate grants. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And our next question is from Danielle Brun. What document formats are accepted through the upload links? Honestly, I think like most of them are, but what we would prefer is uh, to upload them individually. So each five of the documents up upload individually as PDFs, um, that would be the preference. Otherwise we're gonna have to convert them, which just slows down everyone's process. 
Um, so if you can help us out by uploading them individually and as PDFs, that would be incredibly helpful. Um, and most of the documents outside of the um, no overdue tax form that we've provided are in PDF form. Um, the no overdue tax is in a Word document so that you can edit it more easily to specify your organization. Okay. I think we can go to the next question. And our next question is from Deanna Mu. If capital is being invested now in current state fiscal year, can you reimburse the funds being spent or does it have to be spent moving forward? Um, so if you are, um, you know, paying for a project that you plan to use the grant funds for, um, you can use them for expenses starting in the fiscal year in which they were awarded. So if they're awarded in this fiscal year, then they can be for expenses starting July 1st. And then when you begin reporting um, on the grant funds after you've received them, you'll just catch up everything to the current date. So you'll include any expenses made or progress made starting July 1 forward. Um, and who asked that question? I can request Deanna to unmute. Hey, Deanna, did that help to answer your question? Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, our next question is from George Crooker. Well, it is pertaining to uh, the time, the time limit for spending the funds and you've provided that information in the PowerPoint there. So we'll move to the next question. Uh, okay. And the next question is from Starley. The amount of funding that was in the email is less than we have been awarded. Is this just the first payment? And I'm going to unmute Starly. Yes, Starly. Um, hopefully you're able to accept the unmute. Starly, I've sent you a request to unmute your mic. Could you clarify your question a little for us? Yes, Starly, what organization are you with? Can't hear you. I sent an um, email to Starly. She sent the grant number or later in the Q&A, so we're able to get her connected. Should be 41771. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will... Let me check real quick if I can find it in the committee report, and I can kind of show you all how to find this. And Starley, I think we can hear you now. Um, I'm going to look up to see. So the grant idea was given <clears throat> to friends of the over mountain victory tra trail um, and it's listed as 200,000. Is that how much was in your email? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So is there a discrepancy that you, were you told a different amount? Yes, I may clarify. What were you told by like a local legislator that it was for a different amount? Smith Rayner. So we can only uh, admit. Sorry, you're kind of breaking coming in and out. Um, but from what I can see, it's listed as for 200,000. And so we can only provide the funds as it's written in the committee report for the budget. Um, we can follow up by email. It sounds like we've already reached out that way. Um, so just let us know what we can do to be helpful. But um, fortunately, the 200,000 is, is what we have um, 
the authority to provide. You're welcome. Okay, our next question is Albert is from Albert Hodges. If a nonprofit would award their grant to sub grantees, should the grant cover the period of 7 1 2023 to 6 30, whatever year, or from the date the contract is signed through? So he's just inquiring about when their contracts contract period should be with their uh, sub grantees. It sounds like uh, in comparison to the contract with OSBM. So if you can clarify that. Sure. Um, so yeah, I would, the contracts that you have with us will be starting the date in which um, the contract is signed, uh, but it's the performance period's a little bit different um, as far as, you know, you can use the grant funds starting in the fiscal year they're awarded. Uh, but I would, you know, the contract date would be the date in which um, you're sending it to them um, through the reversion date. Um, and Albert, I think you've already been unmuted. Did that help to answer your question? Yes, ma'am. And, and how you answered after I typed it uh, about 15 minutes later answered the question for me. So thank you. You're welcome. Great. So our next question is from Hannah Shelton. If the legislator reads, as provides a directed grant to county for capital improvements to its fairgrounds, would this still be considered a skip grant? Um, it depends on the funding source. So this this go around, it's been a little bit different. Some of the directed grants or general general fund grants will say capital projects, um, but it's not necessarily a skip grant. Um, so see if we can unmute them. Who is Hannah Shelton? Hannah, it looks like you're unmuted. Um, what organization are you with? Or do you know your grant ID? Yes, so I work for Madison County. Mm -hmm. And the grant ID is 20402. Okay. So, yeah, so I mean that's it it is interesting how some of these say capital improvements, but they're not necessarily skiff. So so in this scenario, um yes, the uh grant is regional economic development reserve, which makes it a general fund grant. Um, and those revert October third, twenty twenty five. Okay, so for the scope of work, we would need to be a directed grant then. Correct. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're so welcome. Okay, our next question is from Deborah Winley. We are receiving grant funding in each of the two budget years, but only received email notification about those designated for year one in the budget. Will we receive a similar email next year with details required documents for the funding? Yes, so I, you know, it's a good question about whether or not we even have any grants that only receive funding for the second round. My guess is that you have funding in both years for one grant. Um, and so we can only award funds in the fiscal year that's occurred. Um, so, um, you will get a new contract for the second, um, fiscal year, uh, but go ahead and submit a scope of work that includes the full funding. Deborah, I think, um, you've been unmuted. Did that help? Yes, it does. We are just, uh, we had been told by our local legislative delegation, what the total amount would be over the two years. And there's there's an amount that's missing uh, based on the emails we've received. So if, if you think there's a follow up email sent in year two of the of the budget, or we just wanted to make sure that that extra funding was accounted for. What's your grant ID? In the email notifications, we only reference fiscal year twenty three twenty four. Um, okay. So, 
Yeah. Um, what I could, but I could go ahead and confirm that for you that we have it on file if you want me to. Oh, uh, we're Belmont Abbey College. I'd have to go back in uh, to my emails to to get the exact number. I'm sorry, I did, didn't write that down before the webinar started. No, you're fine. So the so y'all are getting two grants from us, two separate grants. Um, um we're, yeah, we're getting uh, it, it's all for the same project, uh, but I think. Part of it's come. It's part of it's coming from one source and, and another part coming from another source. Mm -hmm. and my understanding is that the second year will be the the balance that would be coming from the uh, ARPA temporary savings funds. So there's 4.5 million. That's one grant, and that's SCIF. So that right. will. So that one's easy. Okay. Uh, the ARPA temporary savings fund has 2.25 million in the first year and 2.25 million in the second year. Correct. It does fall into the ARPA temporary savings fund category, which means that depending on where you are on the list and depending on when we get um, the funds available associated with Medicaid expansion, yes. it's going to determine when we can send you that 2.25. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Okay, great. And our next question is from Kathy Hardison. I saw where you could enter the timeline. But is there a restriction or deadline? Maybe I do apologize. We've answered that. So we'll see. Okay. Uh, the, this question, if we are receiving FY24 and FY25, skip appropriations for one project, should we remit the scope of work for the full project or email only referenced the FY24 appropriation? Yeah, it's a great question um tara that uh go ahead and include the full amount of the grant um and the full project that way you won't have to submit a new scope of work for the second grant i apologize i am having an issue with my screen it keeps jumping <laughs> jumping around on me over here uh okay. Tara, did you have additional questions or a follow-up question? Tara, did that My help question, you? thank you. Um, we will have two grant numbers once we receive the second allocation, but we'll have one scope of work. No, it's, it's the same grant. It's just okay. the funding comes at different times. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, and our next question is from Amy. When is the paperwork due? There's no due date, um, just as soon as you're able to get it um, filled out, but there's no no due date on our end. Okay. All right, and the next question is from Ryan, and I do apologize, I can't pronounce the last name. Uh, if you have a nonprofit and in need of a new double axle trailer and vehicle to pull it with to deliver and get out emergency supplies, tangible, tangible items, first aid meals, and survivor gear to service the homeless populations of the North Carolina, can funds be used for that? Ryan, I just sent your request to unmute because this is going to be totally dependent on your grant description. Right. Absolutely right. Yeah. Um, so I've sent the request. I don't know if you can unmute or accept the unmute. Um, I'm not seeing it come through. But if you want to email NC grants at osbm.nc.gov. Um, and let us know what grant you're with. We can help to answer that question for you. Or your grant ID and your organization name would be helpful to know. Absolutely. Okay. And my, the next question is from Melanie Barron. 
Can you clarify what grant revert means? Our nonprofit received a grant for the current fiscal year. Does the money need to be spent in total by June 30th, 2024? Um, my apologies. I should have clarified and I meant to do so. So uh, for folks where this process is new, reversion is helpful to, to um provide a definition for. So I apologize for that. Um, revert means it has to be returned to the state. So that means that you need to spend the funds by the reversion date. Um, but none of the grants that we've been talking to revert back to 2024. Um, so my assumption is that your grant is awarded for this fiscal year and you have until October 3rd, 2025. Um, but if we want to was that Melanie? Melanie Barron. I sent a Melanie. request to unmute. Okay. Melanie. You actually answered it very soon after I typed the question. I didn't know how to take it back. So thank you. Very good. I would have reverted that part of the question. <laughs> um, no, it's good. Sometimes it's helpful to have it multiple times, but glad it was answered for you. Uh, she had a, actually had a follow up question, which I think would be helpful for everyone. Also, can you clarify whether funding can be used for general operations or does it need to be applied to a new program or specific initiative? Yeah, that's a good point. So it's again, it's it's up to your um, grant description. If it just says a directed grant to your nonprofit, then it could be for operating expenses. It could be for um, uh, a program or anything. I will go ahead and just like a little footnote. If your grant is ARPA temporary savings fund, there is a 5% cap on administrative expenses. Um, so just be aware of that. We'll make sure to point that out as we're reading scopes of work. But if you're not ARPA temporary savings fund, there is not that limit. So, um, yeah, Melanie, it, it's going to depend on your grant description. So, so if the grant description is very vague, which it is, it basically just says directed grant to our organization. Um, mm -hmm. we could use it like for the boring stuff that nobody wants to fund. Yeah, <laughs> like exactly. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It'll if it can free up funds, as long as it follow, as long as you can, um, you have supporting documentation for all of uh, the expenses that you're making so that you can provide that if we need it. Um, and that it's something that your organization would you pay for using your general funds and it's for the public and not private use. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. You're so welcome. Okay, and our next question is from Susan Flowers, and she simply asked, may we download the presentation slides for reference? And if so, how? Yeah, so it'll be on our website, and I should, uh, yeah, you can go to our website um, and uh, osbm.nc.gov, and then click on Stewardship Services, Directed Grants, OSBM Administered Grants, um, and it's going to be there either later today or tomorrow. There's already one there now, but it's an older version, so we'll get this one on there, too. Okay, our next question is from Aaron Tallman. Our email indicates the following GF dash ARPA temporary savings fund. This seems to be in both funding sources. Do our funds revert in? Question. Great question. Um, so it is confusing our just all around the ARPA temporary savings funds are a confusing bunch. Um, so they do they do not revert um, all anything if ARPA temporary savings is included in there, it doesn't revert. Um, the only the difference is that the general fund ARPA temporary savings funds have the 5% administrative cost limit. The SCIF does not. Um, let's see. I don't know if she's. Okay. Was that... Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. It was it Aaron that asked the question? Aaron Tommen. I, I sent her a request to unmute. Aaron, was that helpful? 
helpful. I was just confused because it looked to be in both funding sources. So I just wanted to make sure which category we were in. It's a good question. Yeah, so it's it doesn't revert, um, but it does have the administrative um, limit. Gotcha, and and it also means that we may not get the fu the funding's tied to Medicaid expansion, which means we it might be later, right? The year next year, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but right. the the forecasted dates are on our website, and we'll upload. We'll they're going to update that as time as we receive rounds of funding. So um, that's something it's going to be held in. It's definitely on the main directed grants FAQ. Our contemporary savings fund kind of breaks it down the anticipated disbursement schedule, but it is also on the OSBM administered grant FAQ too. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Our next question is from Drew Heath. Can you provide the anticipated disbursement schedule document? Yes. Yeah, so that's on our website, um, which you can. I need to double check that it's on our administered. I'll, I'll go back and check on that. If one of y'all, Christy or Adam, if y'all can make a note for me to make sure that's there, that'd be super helpful. Um, but in the meantime, I do know it is on our main directed grants page. So osbm.nc.gov, stewardship services, directed grants, um, scroll towards the FAQs and you'll have it. Um, down there, why are grants funded by our particular savings funds not available immediately? And then um, there's a link to the anticipated disbursement schedule. Uh, Cole, while you're there, uh, we have a question that's probably in the area that you are in now. Okay. And the question is, uh, where do we get the offer schedule list for timing? And there you have it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing. I just wanted to make sure I answered that question. That was from Deanna Moo. I just wanted her to see that while you were there already. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so a lot of ours are, are towards the end. There's a chance that it could be sooner. There's a chance it could be later, but based off of our budget folks forecasting, this is the um, timeline we're currently expecting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And our next question is from Gina regarding the grant accounting. Is it required to have is it required to have completely separate bank account for grant funds? Yes, unless you can you have an accounting structure that can do fund accounting um, where you can account for each expense made using the grant funds separately from any other sources of funds. Um, then yes, you'll need separate accounts. You want to try to unmute her? I can't remember who you said. That that was Gina. Gina, I sent you a request to unmute if you have additional follow up to your question. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, so as long as every the, the main part is the accounting part where every dollar is accounted for. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then you don't want to commingle your funds. So. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Okay. Our next question is from Albert Hodges. If you, if we have received grants from NCDHHS, and had a dedicated bank account for it, are we able to have the funds deposited directly into the account and then transfer them directly to a different separate banking account for the OSBM grant upon receipt? Yes, absolutely. Um, that's what I would recommend. And that way you don't have to worry about sending in new electronic payment forms for every, every thing. 
Okay, we have. Oh, I apologize. I cut you off, Cole. You're good. You're good. Okay, our next question is from Barbara is it Lamblin. The vendor electric payment form was confusing. Are you saying we must have a, a separate account for these funds? I do apologize. I thought the question was more related to the, the form specifically. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, our next question is from David Hardesty Eckert. How will the funds be distributed one lump sum quarterly or cost reimbursement? Good question. Um, so typically um, we provide the funds up front in total. Um, unless there's like concerns we have on our end, um, the funds will be transferred in full. Okay, our next question is from Raquel Carlisle. For the scope and budget, can the administrative expenses include our nonprofit's overhead costs? Um, that is going to depend on your grant description. Um, Let's see if I can send her a request to unmute. I think I found her, so I just sent it. Rachel, I don't know if you can accept that request. See if I can find your name in our system, but um, yes, yeah, you just I don't see your name popping up. So shoot us an email at um, NC Grants at OSBM. Let us know your grant ID um, or and or organization name, and we will help you um, with answering that question. Okay. Our next question is from Jeff Morris. We have 15 sites where we would be building a park. Can we consolidate the budget for all 15 locations? Um, so if you're doing the exact same work on each of the 15 sites, then yes, you could say that, you know, you're spending this amount of money equally for instruction costs at each 15 sites. Um, you know, if you're paying an architect or, you know, a design firm to design the projects and they're doing all 15, like that would be its own separate line item. But um, Jeff, I'm gonna try to unmute you. There's no mic option there uh, for Jeff, unfortunately. I think somehow I just went th Jeff, did that work? Uh, can you hear me? I oh, can. Okay, great. Uh, we're a nonprofit, education nonprofit, and we're constructing uh, Charters of Freedom in, um, for $500,000. We got about 15 parks we can construct in 15 counties. They're all identical. They're all, we've already got some parks already constructed throughout the state. So my question in preparing the budget is we can we're approximately going to be able to get 15 parks uh, constructed. Can I use the same budget for all 15 parks and consolidate it that way? We've already, yeah. there's no architectural design fees or anything. It's just construction activity. Absolutely. If it's all going to be the same, then yes. Very good. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. I, I would say the only follow up to that would be, you know, if there's different timelines for them. Maybe like talking your performance measures, like which ones you're focusing on first. Yes, so we've got some we are identifying the 15 counties now that will, will be first options under the grant. Perfect. Okay, great. All right, our next question is from Carmen Houston. Once all documentation has been received and approved by OSBM, what is the time frame for districts receiving the funds? So um, once it's approved, we'll send a contract and then, um, you know, if, depending on the timing of it all, like the first contracts will probably go out at the beginning of January and we hope to send out funds by the second week of January. So, um, you know, if you sign your contract any later than that, then it's probably going to be uh, like a week or two um, from when your contract signed to when you receive the funds. 
uh, I, I'll go ahead and say for folks that aren't aware that our office is administering more grants than we've ever had before by quite a large margin. So, um, and then the state also has a new accounting system. Um, so there are a lot of little pieces that, um, you know, with anything new, there's going to be some hiccups. So I just ask for a lot of patience through this process. We're doing everything we possibly can to get these out the door. Um, uh, but they're just, you know, I would say if you sign a contract within two weeks, you should get your funds. Okay. And our next question is from Julie Talbert. I have a staff turnover question in regards to this grant. So Julie, I sent your request to unmute your mic. Um, if you could elaborate on your question for us, that would be great. And Julie, I'm not seeing you come through, so why don't you shoot us an email to ncgrants at ospm.nc.gov. If it has to be with staff turnover and you're saying that like you need to update the point of contact for any of your grants, just shoot us an email at ncgrants at ospm.nc.gov to identify your grant ID and your new point of contact. Okay. Our next question is from Ronnie Russell. Will another person from our organization be allowed to listen to this webinar at a later date? Um, yes, anyone you want to share with any of these webinars with your organization, um, you can share any of the links. We've got links to additional, um, additional webinars. We'll be holding these every Thursday. Um, they're all on our website, um, so feel free to share that. And then we'll also have recordings on there as well. So either they could sign up for one that's live or um, you watch the recordings. Okay, great. And our next question is, does the Regional Economic Development Reserve as the source of funding fall under SCIF or directed funding? Uh, direct regional economic development reserve is a directed general fund grant. Okay. It reverts. Does our reversion dates? Mm -hmm. And now our next question is from Lawrence Carlisle. We've searched the house bill 259 for our grant and it comes back not found. Would it be somewhere else? And, uh, well, I guess you can refer them to the database. Yeah, or if we want to um, unmute them really quick. Let's do that. I do apologize. Okay. Lawrence, I sent your request to unmute. Yeah, I got what, it. What organization are you with? The Gilbert Theater. Gilbert Theater. So oh, I guess I could do two things. I do see you in our system. Um, and I'm not sure what, oh, we got some feedback. Not sure what, um, I'm gonna mute you because I think that there's some feedback happening. Um, but the, so the database on our website, you can always search there. And it looks like there is 250,000. Um, and we are administering it, so I'm not totally sure what exactly you're looking for, but it's a regional economic development grant. So it's in the committee report, it's not in the bill text. So if I look at the committee report, which should have been in your email notification, like a link to it. It's right there. Provides a directed grant to go over a theater. Um, so hopefully that helped answer your question. Um, if not, shoot us another question, maybe. 
or send us an email. Okay. Our next question is from Lisa Locklear. Will mm -hmm. access for the smart sheet be available for multiple people to submit invoices, quarterly reporting for each grant? Yes, we can share um, your smart sheet reporting form um, with whomever you'd like for us to share it with. Um, but you won't get that until you've received your grant funds. But if you already have a grant and you're asking about that for the current grants you have and you want us to share it with somebody else, shoot us an email at ncgrants at osbm.nc.gov, the grant ID and who you want us to share it with and their email address, and we'll be happy to do that. Okay. And our next question is from Raquel Carlisle. I want to make sure I'm using the correct scope of work document. The information says that this is a directed grant, but then it also for capital costs and equipment. So I'm under, oh, I'm unclear which scope of work form to use, state capital or directed grant. So you're gonna, the, the scope of work document is all the same. Um, you're, the scope of work for every grant is exactly the same. We just provided examples of how to fill them out based on what kind of project or what kind of funding source you may have. So these are like examples you can use and yours may be a combo of like two of these. It may be that you've got subrecipients, but it's also a capital project. It may be that your budget's really thorough and you're you know, doing a lot with that budget rather than just buying a fire truck. And so you may want to use like the one with the longer budget plus um, the directed grant. Um, so the examples are really just to provide you examples as to how you could fill this out. Um, the scope of work document that you're filling out is all the same for every grantee. The like actual form you need to fill out is exactly the same as everyone else's. The examples, that we provide are just examples. So click on that scope of work. Okay. And our next question Our next question is from Colada Cloud. I apologize, we have multiple duplicates in the in the list. If you have two OSBM directed grants and have each grant listed in an individual project, do we have to have separate bank accounts for each grant? There's a little piece of that that kind of confused me, but yes, every grant should be held in a different account unless you have an accounting structure that can do fund accounting and account for things separately. Um, Carlotta, I'm going to request to unmute you. Let me know if that helped. Carlotta, did that help to answer your question? You should be unmuted. Can't hear you. Where do I speak at? There you go. Oh, you can hear me? <laughs> I can hear you. Okay, I wasn't sure where the speaker was. Um, um, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> we have uh, multiple grants, and our accounting system allows us to set up a project for each individual one where it has its own balance sheet and expenditure and revenue statements. Um, so we were wondering when you were speaking about uh, separate banking accounts, if your accounting system allows for this separation of your funds and uh, and the revenue expenditures and cash, do you have to have a separate bank account? No, what you have is totally acceptable. Those separate bank accounts are for much like smaller nonprofits that do not have that accounting structure set up. Thank you so much. You're welcome. 
Okay, our next question is from Amy. Can I get clarification on our total amount? The way I'm reading your website, it looks like we're getting 4 million total, but I want to confirm. So if you're getting money in this first fiscal year, then it's going to tell you that amount in that year. If you're getting money also in the second year, um, then you would add that together and that's how much you're getting for that particular grant. You just can't receive this second round um, until um, that fiscal year. And Amy, I just sent you a request to unmute. What organization are you with? Um, Marsville Area Christian Mission. It looks like we're getting 3 million this year and 1 million next, but I just wanted to confirm. How do you spell it? <clears throat> Mooresville. Mooresville, got it. Yes. So, yes, yeah, so you've got the ARPA Temporary Savings Fund, 1 million in the first, 1 million in the second, and then You've got the regional economic development, so the directed grant with two million in the first. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And our next question is from Jeremy. If we have a need to change our scope of work documentation after the contract is signed, is that possible? Yes, yeah, so in your contract, it's going to state that if your budget changes beyond 10%, you are required to submit a updated scope of work to um, have it approved before any expenses are made on those changes. Um, you know, the goal is to submit everything as accurately and as detailed as possible prior to receiving your grant funds. This is incredibly important. Um, so that we can approve of the expenses beforehand, especially since we are sending these funds up front. Um, so please be as detailed as possible. Now we understand that changes can occur based on um, budget changes, costs, supply. Um, so we understand that there can be changes in that regard. Um, so in that scenario, yes, you can submit an updated scope of work just make sure it includes the full scope of the project. And Jeremy, it looks like you're unmuted. Did that help? Yeah, that was very helpful. I mean, we're pretty much using most of it for operational costs. And so our, our scope of work was pretty broad. Um, but say if we wanted to buy like a shower trailer for the homeless, we would need to update that and the scope of work, correct? If we decided to do that later on. Right. So, um, and I don't know if yours has been approved yet or not, but if you're bought, like, for instance, if you're buying equipment and all that stuff, like you'll, you want to provide as much detail so that we can approve yeah. of it. Cause if, if later on you submit the expense and it's not on your scope of work, there'll be, it'll become like a question yeah. that, that we'll have yeah. to follow Really it, it just, cause our board just hasn't had much time to discuss what we want to use the funds for. Um, mm -hmm. so, so maybe I rushed to do the scope of work before I should have, but I went ahead and just did it a pretty broad application, but, uh, but you answered my question. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for asking. Okay. Um, so I did see one question from earlier, I think. And so oh, I apologize, Valari, if I'm jumping the gun on oh, you're the that it's showing up for you, but there was a question about the audit um, requirements. And so I just wanted to clarify and I'll update the PowerPoint too, because I noticed it as I was reading it. Um, so level three, uh, the question was from John about referencing 500K or greater <laughs> when determining the level of reporting, but it's, um, I need to correct the PowerPoint. It's actually, um, if you receive, hold, use, or expend state financial assistance in an amount equal to or greater than 500,000. So I just wanted to clarify that. It's equal to or greater than 500,000 in total. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. I didn't see that question, so I'm glad you saw that. Yeah, of course. All right, and now next question. Uh, it's from Albert Hodge, Albert Hodges. 
Mm -hmm. uh, if a nonprofit was awarded X amount of dollars for 2023-24 as the direct grant, does that have to be spent by 6-30-2024 as well? And um, his follow-up to that was it's a regional economic development grant. Um, can you, does it need to be spent by when? 630, 2024. So if it's for, for the first fiscal year, is that what was said? The 2324 fiscal year. So that's year. October 3rd, 2025. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the next question is from John M. The PowerPoint reference, oh. This, yeah, sorry, saw. so I think that ours was not a oh, okay, okay. order. So then was that it? Was that our last one? That is the last question. Woohoo, fantastic. Um, great questions, everybody. Thank you to my team for all your help, Valari. Really appreciate um, what you did with the Q&A. Thanks, everybody, for um, attending. We will continue to have these over the next couple of weeks um, and months. And so feel free to join back in. Um, let us know if you have any questions, shoot us an email at ncgrants at osbm.nc.gov. Our job here is to help you all and make your uh, projects as successful as possible. Uh, we love seeing all the great work that y'all are doing across the state. Um, so we'll be here um, to help usher you through the full grant cycle. Um, thanks again. And um, yeah, we'll see everybody soon. Y'all take care and have a happy holiday.